Hello, welcome to my channel. Today, I'd love to share with you the painting process of this pair of legs. So the software that I'm using is Adobe Fresco. I think this live brush function is really stunning and amazing. It has the texture of real oil painting, but um, well, it has a lot of different brush types. But in my opinion, they are more difficult to control than real life brushes. In this sense, I think uh, painting digitally is not really easier than painting in real life on an easel. So this leg painting that I made is not perfect. Of course, the leg is even a little bit deformed, <laughs> but I would say I I'm really satisfied with the results given that is my first is the first time I paint a pair of human legs. So a little bit of my background. I have not been to any formal art school. I have had two art instructors in the past, one in person and another one online, and that's it. And in this video, I actually want to convince you that you don't necessarily have to get years of formal training in art or invest thousands of money to be able to produce paintings that are nice enough. Art school is good and helpful, of course, but these things take a lot of time and money and not everyone can afford that. However, I believe you can still feel empowered to produce satisfactory arts for your own enjoyment or for others to appreciate. The good news is if you want to express yourself, your ideas through representational paintings, paintings that have some degree of realism, in fact, you just need to know three main principles. I learned this mainly from Chris Fonataro. He is just an amazing online art instructor. His free YouTube videos have already taught me enough. And if you want to go further, I strongly recommend you to join his Patreon page. It is worth every penny. And also it's not expensive at all. So the three things you need to know are structure, meaning your drawing, contrast, meaning controlling the value of light and dark, and finally saturation, meaning how pure a color is, simply put. Before you start painting, first of all, of course, you need to draw some sort of a draft. This can seem quite intimidating, but there is really no trick to drawing well. Practice. I myself is not a very good or skillful drawer. I would say I paint better than I draw. But if you want to draw well or well enough, try to draw something, something small and simple, like every day or whenever you want to. Spend just five minutes maybe. Very soon your eyes and your hand will get used to transferring 3D objects into 2D. And if you're painting, your draft does not have to be very detailed. You simply have to get the general shapes and the distance between these shapes more or less accurate because your paint will cover your draft anyway and you still have the chance to change anything that seems off proportion to you later. So after the draft, maybe you don't know where to start painting. I usually start by painting the darkest areas first, a habit that I learned from Chris. It's good because you see that as soon as you put in those darker areas, the object already kind of pops out and it gives you a sense of satisfaction and confidence that your painting is likely gonna work. When filling the painting with paint, what color you use actually does not matter as much as how light or how dark the color is. So you should always pay attention to contrast in light and shade. This has something to do with human visual perception. We judge the form and the shape of objects mainly based not on color itself, but on value contrast. That's why a black and white, if you take away um, the color from a photo 
turning it into black and white and the photo still reads, you can understand everything inside. So yeah, always pay attention to contrast in light and shade and let the darker areas be, be darker, be really dark, dark enough and lighter areas be lighter. Don't be afraid to go to extreme if that's what you are seeing. And trust me, if you know how to observe light and shades and get the light and dark contrast more or less accurate, your painting cannot be bad. Since I've been living away from home, I don't have my easel and oil paints with me, so I've been painting a lot digitally recently. But the principle of painting is really the same. It's just that mixing color may be more convenient on an iPad. And yes, I can use undo button on iPad, but not on an easel, of course. But actually, oil painting itself is very forgiving as well. You can always scrap the paint off or just cover it with another layer of paint if you are not happy with something. It's not like watercolor or color pencils, which can be quite unforgiving at times. If you want to take your painting further, try to observe color saturation as well. Usually, colors in poorly lit areas would be less saturated and colors in well lit areas should be more saturated. Always reserve the most saturated colors for a small spotlight area, which is the focus of your painting. I might not have demonstrated this very well with this video. You can check out my other orange painting. It might also be helpful to know that um, in almost every painting you have to go through a so-called ugly stage where your, your painting looks um, horrible, you might want to throw it away, but don't. It's ugly because it's not complete yet and every painting has to go through this phase unfortunately. Don't just criticize yourself um, by thinking how ugly or how strange it looks. Try to think about why it looks strange. Is it because you didn't get the shadowed part dark enough? Is it because in some part um, the colors are too saturated while they shouldn't be? Is it because um, the colors are too warm or too cool? Um, try to really analyze the problem and once you know what's wrong, you can try to fix it. Because after you have established the basic shape and the basic um, light and dark areas, most of what you're doing with your painting is just adjusting and adjusting by comparing your painting to your reference photo or your reference object or the reference image in your mind that you want to produce. Painting the semi-transparent white little pens is um, definitely not easy. Try not to think of it as white, just use whatever color your eyes actually see in the reference. And again, pay attention to the contrast in color value. I must add that, however, um, to be able to reproduce colors that you see is a skill that needs practicing. But honestly, um, teachers can not teach you much about that. It is all about practicing and developing a sensitivity towards colors 
at the beginning stage, you can put a photo into some sort of photo editing software or something like that and use a color picker to figure out what colors really are there. So I painted this on two different days and on second day I, I forgot to record my screen so I'm really sorry about that and I can only show you um, the rest of the painting process with this time-lapse video. What I'm doing in the final part of a painting is really just pushing color, value and situation adjusting as I continuously compare it with the reference photo or the reference object. So um, actually you can... S um, I can already stop here because it's just really some fine adjustment that is like um, your artistic decision, they are not really necessary. Once your painting has gotten to this phrase, things will not be really so hard because your painting already reads, it can already communicate what you're trying to express. But for this one, honestly, it's just um, me practicing human figure painting. I'm not really trying to express anything particular with this pair of beautiful legs. And after you have the main character established, painting the background would not be that hard and would not be that stressful. The principles are basically the same. Look for how light and how dark things really are how dark the shadows are and even though you can see from the reference photo everything seems to be white actually there is still subtle um, change in value in this white background nothing is just really painly white, right? so now you have already known all the essentials for creating a decent painting that can express whatever ideas you want to communicate through your art. With some practice, you can really start creating nice artworks. See you in the next video. I don't know when, but I promise it will come. And if you find these tips useful, and if you have used them in creating your own artwork, you can show me your work, tag me on Instagram, Arting Amy. I look forward to seeing them.